Well, there are two stories I tell people, depending on what their interest is. One, the true story, and the other is actually a story where I actually articulate a vision and then how I delivered on it. But the honest uh, truth is, I was too naive to actually really be able to articulate a vision that this will happen. Uh, so almost everything that has happened in IntelliCap, Avishkar, and everything that we have built has actually been a chain of reactions. Uh, maybe some of these were anticipated, some of them were audacious decisions taken uh, sometimes prematurely and sometimes uh, well thought through. Uh, but the entire ecosystem actually emerged over a period of time and not necessarily because there was a vision behind it. Uh, what was very clear in our minds that entrepreneurs need to succeed and uh, we didn't want to wait for somebody else to come in and try to make a difference. Uh, so rather than waiting for somebody else to do something that was missing in the value chain, we decided to do it ourselves. And that's how the whole ecosystem emerged. Uh, well, I think we, we are not complete, but uh, the ecosystem seems to be reasonably well uh, reasonably well articulated now, and not because of our effort, because there are a lot of other people who participated in it. Uh, there's a significant amount of new incubators, new thought processes, different ways of using technology to make a difference. Things that we did not participate in or have started participating much later than others. So while the ecosystem specifically in India has uh, done very well, uh, in the remaining parts of the developing economy, there are far many challenges. Uh, part of this thinking is, made us actually think about replicating whatever we have done in India, in East Africa. And that's really our new challenge. Is how do we replicate what we did in India over a couple of decades to take it back to Africa and do it in five years or seven years' time? So we basically have, we are looking at two markets. One is actually South Asia, Southeast Asia. So these are countries that are surrounding India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Indonesia. Uh, Avishkar, the fund side has actually already started investing in it. Sankalp is actually going to be in Indonesia in November this year. Uh, and East Africa is actually a very uh, significant part of our movement. Uh, IntelliCap has already set up on-ground office there. We have done Sankalp, we have set up our impact angel network, and our consulting team is already on the ground and we are hoping to take our virtual incubation and the rest of the ecosystem elements over a period of time there. So I think in East Africa, we are far more advanced. In South Asia and Southeast Asia, we have made a significant step with Avishkar, just about closing a $45 million new fund investing in this geography, so. Well, so, uh, as I told you, we actually really do not strategize as much. We believe in action. So we looked at Africa divided into four parts, east, west, north, south, which is the easiest way to do it. Uh, north looked like francophone, south looked like reasonably developed, South Africa is reasonably developed. The choices were between east and west, and uh, we realized that the West Africa is much smarter, more complex, and probably is not something that you may want to venture into first before understanding the local ethos, etc. So that left East Africa which has a fairly vibrant uh, developmental economy. And we thought it may actually be suitable for us to move in there, first test out our model, and see if Africa actually really need us. Uh, sometimes you go with the belief that you have something to offer to the local landscape, and then you suddenly realize there is not much you can offer. So we wanted to go to a place where there was some level of understanding that we had, and get a feedback, and East Africa gave us a fairly strong feedback. Well, mobile money, yes, uh, yes, in, to some extent, actually, it has a, a significant value creation on the ground. Like in India also, microfinance played a fairly significant role in supporting the growth of impact investing. Uh, but in Kenya, I think in addition to mobile money, there is actually a serious amount of other players who are already doing something uh, in terms of impact investing, whether they are incubators or advisory services. Uh, I think what was needed is actually how to put all pieces together and bring this ecosystem together. And we believe we have a reasonable amount of experience in making that happen.
So I think impact investing is uh, very akin to my own experience. I'm a forestry manager and uh, forestry and management were taught to me separately. So I continue to stay confused about whether I'm a forester or a manager. Impact investing has the same challenge. Whether you are making impact or you are making an investment continues to play against each other. I think over a period of time, one does come across how to balance these two uh, very different kinds of expectations one carries. Uh, when you are looking at an entrepreneur, what we try to see is, does he actually, the business that he has in, in, encapsulated or articulated, does that business actually has an inbuilt impact in it? So if the business articulates impact as part of the core strategy, then we try to make an investment in it, with the belief that the more business that person or individual does, the more impact he will make. Uh, not every time we have been successful, but generally this thought process of actually taking, making an impact in a business that actually makes more impact works, even though I personally believe uh, impact investor is very different from an impact enterprise. And an impact investor must hold himself to a much higher level of accountability than just any other investor. So uh, impact investing is not about just finding an entrepreneur and giving him money and hoping him to make an impact. Uh, but it is also about investor to hold himself accountable for taking much higher risk, probably spending much more time in building the company uh, and doing much more than probably a traditional investor will do. So this is a challenge that we will never walk away from. Uh, because the risks are high, uh, the general desire is the reward should be high as well. And uh, I think sometimes you actually take more risk, yet generate lower rewards. And uh, so from a risk-adjusted perspective, this is my personal belief, on a risk-adjusted basis, uh, impact investing will always deliver lesser returns. But this does not mean in absolute terms it will deliver lesser returns. It is only adjusted to risk it will deliver lower returns. So on an absolute term, it may actually, as the latest Cambridge Associate report with Jin indicate, uh, sometimes emerging market impact funds have the potential to outspawn the other mainstream impact funds as well, mainstream funds as well. Yeah, well, I think the most, uh, the best approach that works only for poor people is actually microfinance, which also is a business. I would not say that there are not many businesses that won't work with microfinance, uh, with poor people. I think the number of those businesses and their ability to make a difference uh, from a financial perspective remains questionable at this point of time. So there are a large number of businesses and a large number of entrepreneurs who are trying to have other than financial services, uh, products and services that will work for very poor people. The challenge is money actually sells itself. So it's actually a pull product, not a real push product. Anything else that you sell to poor people is actually a push product. So other than job creating activities, uh, so for example, I have invested in a lot of handicrafts enterprises, which actually create livelihoods and therefore it works beautifully for poor people. Uh, along with microfinance, are the two businesses that will always actually make a difference to poor people. But otherwise you'll have to actually move up to economically active and then lower income population to make a difference. Well, I think uh, those who did those studies might have been surprised, I was not, because uh, giving money to a poor person and expecting that you are changing his life is really not the brightest idea. So, I think impact is uh, to, make, to bring about a transformational change in the life of a poor. Uh, is almost like uh, solving cancer. And by giving an antibiotic, if you expect cancer will be resolved, uh, then microfinance is that antibiotic. And I don't think so you can resolve cancer by just giving antibiotics. Uh, so that's I say, you need to go beyond microfinance, build an ecosystem, provide many more products and services. Microfinance is an important ingredient, but not the only ingredient. I think uh, the most interesting thing that we are right now looking, thinking about is actually extending uh, a lot of what we do with entrepreneurs into a technology platform. So we are trying to roll up and provide a lot of services virtually, and that would allow us to expand globally much faster than what we could in a physical form. Uh, we have largely been a very physical and finance-driven uh, thought process. 
We are trying to bring in a fairly significant element of technology in what we do now. Now, how it will pan out, time will tell. But uh, because there is uh, elements that we don't understand and we don't know how it will pan out, it's probably the most exciting thing we are dealing with right now. <laughs> so, my first lesson very quickly I learned after six years. Uh, it took six years to raise a million dollar. Made six investments in the first six years and almost all the investments were struggling. So my first big lesson was in 2007. And uh, that lesson was that if you are a good person trying to work with good person to make a difference to the lives of the poor, the consequences may be disastrous. And therefore you need to actually bring in some element of uh, uh, you have to keep your goodness, but you need to bring in discipline. Which does not mean you have to get away with the goodness, but you have to move away from just talking about good things and to a disciplined action, which is very, very different than just being bleeding hearts, uh, making a difference. So that was my biggest learning uh, and made a huge difference to me. Uh, the other thing that I actually, uh, which actually comes from my learning from my own success, and I would call our partial success because we have still a long distance to go to be successful is that uh, if you are naive and you do not know what you're doing, chances are you can make a difference. Uh, because uh, many of us who have actually seen a lot of things fail, uh, start becoming very conservative about taking risks. And uh, I think new ideas require people to be very naive and very inexperienced about how the world functions. So I'm actually very encouraged when I find people who talk very stupid things, which we know will fail, because these are the kind of people who will probably come up with a new idea that will work.